All right, y'all ready? Let's make some pizza. Super easy recipe. And once you make this recipe and master it, you'll never, ever have pizza as good as this. All right, thank y'all for watching my, my channel here. And um, Pizza 101, so simple. One of the biggest challenges with people making their own pizza is this, the yeast. What do you do with this? This here is gonna be mixed with a cup and a half of warm water, about 110 degrees, which is, if you put it on the top of your hand there, it's warmer than your body temperature, but it's not hot. So here are the ingredients. I like to use a really good bread flour. That's uh, King Arthur, which is one of the best bread flour brands. You have some salt. You have some just plain old white table sugar. The yeast that we talked about. And olive oil. I like to use two attachments on my mixer. I start out with the paddle. And then after it comes together, I use the dough hook. And you let the mixer do the work. That's what gets that gluten going. So I add a cup and a half of that warm water into my mixing bowl. And then I just add my yeast right on top of it. And what's gonna happen is that warm water is gonna start to activate this yeast and it will start foaming up. So while that yeast is foaming up, it's gonna take five minutes. So I'll skip ahead. But I just wanted to say thank y'all for watching my channel. Now one of the challenges with baking, and that's kind of what this is, is you have to really be precise with your measurements. And there ain't a whole lot of precision in me. I wish I had a little more of it. But that's two cups of flour. Four cups of flour. Two, two cup containers of flour. We're gonna add one tablespoon of sugar. And I go ahead and add that to the mixer at the same time that I've got my yeast in there. You can't do that with the salt because the salt would kill the yeast. And I also add one teaspoon of olive oil. So my Yeast is starting to foam up, and you'll see it starts to get almost like, uh, I don't know, foam. Foam, they come up onto the surface, and you can really smell the yeast. And now to that, I add four cups of this bread flour. Add one tablespoon of salt. And then, like I said, I start with this paddle just to get the ingredients to start to come together. I'll probably mix this total for about, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes between this and the dowel. Start this really slow, y'all, because it'll fly everywhere. And then you just let the mixer do the work. And I'll scrape it every once in a while. And now, Sometimes you have to add a little more water to it. It all depends on how humid the conditions are. And so a couple times what I'll do is I'll lift her up. It's actually pretty wet, so, but as it continues to mix, it's going. And so I'm taking it off this paddle and I'm gonna switch to the dough hook and then I'll just let it go. Every once in a while you have to uh, scrape it even with the dough hook on it though. But you can see it's a little bit tacky still. So I'm gonna add just a touch of flour in here before I add the dough hook, use the dough hook. It's already a good feeling dough. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at how the dough is supposed to feel. But you can see, it's still a little bit sticky but it's a nice dough. It smells good. So now I'm gonna use this 
dough hook and let it really work this dough over. Make sure you lock it and just keep it on low. And round and round and round it's gonna go. Okay, so I think she's about done mixing. It's been about 15 minutes. I'm gonna take it out and show you what it looks like. Always cut the mixture off first before you unlock it. You can see it's no longer sticking. It's a good feeling dough. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna coat this in olive oil and put it in a bowl and stick it in a warm spot and I'm gonna let this rise double in size. Okay, so we got the dough ball. Stick them in there and put a little olive oil on top of them. Go like that. And then we're gonna let that double in size. So I'm gonna let it rise for a couple hours and then I'll come back to it. So I put the pizza dough in the oven and I just set the oven at 145 which is just warm and I left the door open and I had the pizza in the pizza dough in the bowl with a little bit of saran wrap over top of it and I let it sit in there for an hour and that really sped up the uh, rising process the dough really activated in there and doubled in size and this is what it looks like so look at these pizza doughs now they have doubled in size they smell amazing and they are ready to be stretched pulled shaped all right y'all so this pizza dough has been rising for about i'd say what time is it uh, almost two hours and you can see it's doubled in size it's a beautiful dough so here's what i do now so now i take this let me wipe my surface off here oh. A little water on here. All right, let's do it. So we've got the dough. It's more than doubled in size. And each one of these are going to make two nice size pizzas or four about that size pizza. Four eight to ten inch piece size pizza. So I'm going to make eight pizzas tonight. And you gotta have all your mise en place together. So I've got all my ingredients ready. So once I start this production process, I just roll right through. My oven's heating up. I wanna let it heat up for about an hour, up to 500. And look at this dough. It's absolutely beautiful. And it feels amazing too. And if y'all could, if y'all could smell it, it smells so good. So here are all the toppings. Got some balsamic vinegar reduction, pepperoni, peppers and cheese and white sauce and red sauce and olive oil. And check this out over here. This is one of the coolest things. So this is garlic butter with a little bit of black pepper, crushed red pepper, and a touch of sugar to brush on the crust right when it comes out of the oven. That's an awesome finishing touch. Cooper is always hanging out in the kitchen with me. He's such an awesome friend. So I like to use parchment paper. I like to use parchment paper to build the pizza on and then use that to transfer it into the oven. And then midway through the cooking process, I get rid of the parchment. I just pull the parchment paper out, throw it away or use it for the next pizza. All right, so the first thing we do is we take the, put a little flour on our work surface, and then we're just gonna take this dough out. And I'm gonna, the initial punch down. And then I'm gonna fold it back into a dough ball again. Oh, this dough feels so good, y'all. And then I'm gonna cut this into three pieces, four pieces. So I'll go half, this 
That'll feel so good. And I'll go half. And then I'll go half. So I'm getting four pieces out of that dough ball. So I'm taking each of these dough balls and working them back into their perfect circle again. Man, if you could see the little bubbles of air in them, this is gonna be a really good pizza crust. So, what you do with the dough ball is, first thing I do, look at the bubbles on it. I'm gonna mash the, the initial mash down, and I can already see, you can already see I'm starting to build a crust up. And then I just take and turn The nice thing about this parchment paper is you can pick it up like that with the parchment paper to slide it into the oven. So, and then what I do is I just take this and I just pull that parchment paper right out. And it just comes right out. And then I let that piece of finish cooking on the actual stone. And you can see it's pretty. Now, the longer the oven heats up, the better. That 500 degrees in between them two quarry stones, it just bakes the most beautiful pizza. So I use this as my pizza peel. It's just a pan, and I just use this to get the pizza out. And if you take a look at this pizza out there, look at that joker. Look how the crust... See how it's risen nicely? It's got, oh man, if you could see underneath there. Let me see if you can get underneath there. Can you see underneath there? Mm -hmm. Look at that crust. Whoa, that's hot. So this pizza's done. Look at that. It smells good. Look right here. And then I finish it with that garlic butter. The spiciness of the crushed red peppers and the black pepper and the sweetness of that sugar on that hot crust right as it goes out to the table. What a finishing touch to this pizza. All right, y'all, thank you for watching my video on pizza. Do me a favor, give it a like and a share and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any other videos coming up.